NASCAR officially has a new meteorites deal, and it's a big one, so let's talk about it. NASCAR formally announced their new meteorites deal on Wednesday in Nashville for their end of the season awards banquet, and it's a substantial one. It will include four media partners, and it will run from 2025 through the 2031 season, which is crazy to even think that we're going to be in the 2030s by the time this deal is over but we're all just getting older at this point. And it's going to be substantial, right? $7.7 .7 billion in total. That includes the CW's deal as well for the Xfinity series. It's going to pay out $1.1 billion a year. That's up 40% basically from what they are getting now, which is around $820 million. So NASCAR got that price increase that they wanted and the team should be very happy and we'll see what happens there with those negotiations going forward. But in terms of this new media rights deal, what all does this entail? Well, it's going to entail four media partners, two newcomers joining both Fox and NBC. Those two newcomers, Amazon Prime, as well as Max through Warner Brothers Discovery, uh, this platform, and which will also include TNT as well. So what's the breakdown look like? Well, Fox will have the first 14 races of the season, including the Bush Clash. Their season, if it was 2024, would end on May 12th at that Darlington race. The next five races after that will be on Amazon Prime. The five races after that will be on Max, streaming service through Bleacher Report, but also simulcast on TNT. So everybody was stomping their feet and throwing a fit like a toddler, like they're on My Super Sweet 16, you don't have to worry. You only have to get one streaming service instead of two, which should feel like a win if you already have a cable subscription. The final 14 races of the season will be on NBC. The biggest issue here, and this is where people are going to get really confused at, is that for the first 19 races of the Cup Series season, practice and qualifying will be on Amazon Prime. Very confusing, right? You're like, well, Fox is showing the race. Correct. Fox is showing the race, but qualifying and practice will be on Amazon Prime. For the final 17 races of the season, practice and qualifying will then move to Max, as well as being simulcast on True TV. We're just throwing every different channel we've got in here right now because what else is on True TV other than Impractical Jokers and the first four March Madness games? No, absolutely nothing. I honestly don't know what's on there. So they're going to add practice and qualifying because you never have to worry about it getting bumped when it's on there. So for the final 17 races of the season, practice and qualifying can be seen on Max if you have that, or if you have a cable subscription, you can watch it on True TV. So at the end of the day, and everybody was freaking out that we might have to pay for two streaming services if it's going to Amazon Prime and Max, everybody can calm down. You don't have to puff out your chest, don't have to get all mad and angry and stomp around. You're still going to be able to get your races on Fox, your races on NBC, you're getting TNT back. Somebody go find Bill Weber. He's still being an illusionist somewhere in St. Pete. Keep him out of a hotel lobby by all means. We don't want him to go in there. But bring him back. Get him back on TNT. Get Wally Dahlin back back. Kyle Petty's probably not doing anything either. You just get the gang back together and you can get that TNT Summer Series. Cue up the TNT from ACDC. You can't put it in here. That's a great way to get a copyright strike and I don't want that right now. Just get all of them back together. What's the Amazon Prime broadcast going to look like? I have no idea at this point. It also means that NBC will not have both, as it stands now, the national race, which they've always tried to amp up into being a big event, event and they will not have the 4th of July weekend as well which is again very interesting because that 4th of July weekend will now be on that TNT Max side of the deal and whether that stays at the Chicago street race move somewhere else that is a pretty big weekend and NASCAR's always put some emphasis on that being a big viewership weekend last year in 2023 at least it was the second most viewed race of the season behind the Daytona 500 so that's substantial NBC then, of course, will pick up the remainder of the season through the playoffs. Here's where things are a little bit annoying, though. For the Fox portion of the NASCAR Cup Series media rights deal, they will have the first 14 races. That includes the Bush Clash, Daytona Duels, as well as the All-Star Race, which means that there's going to be an off weekend sometime in that first 14-week period right there, because currently, after 14 races, that would be Mother's Day weekend in, on the 2024 schedule. The next weekend is the All-Star Race, so they're not going to move the All-Star Race up a weekend and then have the other race in between there as they go to Charlotte. That just doesn't really make any sense. They could do it, but it also seems like we'll get an off weekend there, potentially on Mother's Day weekend, and then they'll pick it up in the All-Star Race the weekend after, and then they'll hand off, presumably for the Coke 600, to Amazon Prime, which lands a marquee event. Amazon Prime is getting a crown jewel race 
presumably based off the next meteorites deal. It would be absolutely wild for NASCAR to change the schedule in 2025 to not have the Coke 600 on Memorial Day weekend. That's not happening. So Amazon Prime is picking up a marquee race. While it appears that Max and TNT will be picking up a marquee weekend as well on the 4th of July. So NASCAR is spreading around the wealth for their marquee dates across all four media partners as it stands. It's a really big deal for all of them and probably a reason why they're spending $1.1 billion combined on all of this. NBC's portion of the schedule, there are 14 races. 10 of those races will be on USA and only four of them will be on network, which means that only six races uh, or only four races in the playoffs will be on network, which is really unfortunate. And I think we can already go ahead and assume those will be the last four races more than likely. So an interesting caveat with the NBC portion of the deal is while they have the final 14 races, they will also be showing races on Peacock as well. Whether that's all 14 races or select races, still don't know all the answers to that, but that is an interesting caveat because a lot of fans have asked and basically begged for races to be shown on Peacock. They're like, we're paying for it, why can't you just put the races on here? And they have done select races in the past. Doing all 14 though would certainly lower that barrier of entry for fans if they don't wanna buy a cable subscription since Peacock is only around $5.99 a month, or if you get the Black Friday deal, you can get it for like $20 a year. That might go up next year, but for now, that's where it stands. That part of this deal kind of does stink, just in terms of like how many viewers are available, but the reason that this deal is worth $1.1 billion annually is because they're paying a lot of money, which means that they want to put these races onto cable to get more cable subscribers, whether you get that through YouTube TV, Hulu Live, Spectrum, doesn't matter. They want those subscribers to come in. And like we've seen this year, there's been about a 5% decrease from 2022 to 2023 in terms of cable subscribers. So that's not great. But at the end of the day, having this series, races, practice qualifying, and the five races be on Amazon Prime is really good because more Americans have access to Amazon Prime than they do cable by a substantial margin. So that is putting the series in front of new eyes and it's more accessible than cable is as well. And I know there's a lot of people out there that maybe don't understand that, but it's true, right? If you don't have a cable subscription, cable's costing you what, between 70 and $200 a month, depending on who and what and type of package you have. If you just have a Prime membership uh, for Amazon Video, that's sending you back $14.99 a month, I believe, substantially lower bar of entry. And it's in a lot more American households than what cable's in at this point. Um, Outside of that though, the deal is really good for NASCAR. It is a seven year deal, which is great for NASCAR. It's giving them more money on a per race basis. Obviously we're seeing that with it being worth $1.1 billion annually. Whether NASCAR's teams get more cut of that pie, we'll have to wait and see what happens with the charter agreements. Right now it currently stands that racetracks get 65% of that TV money, teams get 25% and then NASCAR gets the remaining portion of that pie, which is 10%. Uh, so it's really kind of up in the air who's going to get what at this point, but teams definitely want more money and they want some of that money from the tracks to come down. With that $1.1 billion annually, teams should definitely be getting more of that revenue money coming in. So that's what the new deal is. Xfinity obviously will be solely on the CW, which is free to air. If you have a set of rabbit ears or the digital receptor um, antenna now, you can get that for free. As for the truck series, well, unfortunately, they're staying on Fox through the 2031 season exclusively on FS1, which is unfortunate for anybody with eyes and ears. Fox is just not putting the time, energy, money, effort behind the truck series broadcast. They're not sending the booth to the racetrack, which is really unfortunate. Their pit reporters are doing their best, but they can't carry the entire broadcast. The in-studio booth in Charlotte, they can't even get the TVs to line up correctly to make it look like that static image is somewhat maybe making them pretend that they're at the racetrack. Jamie Little is an elite announcer. Her voice will put you to sleep faster than a Lord of the Rings movie. Michael Waltrip has no idea what is actually happening on the race. And Phil Parsons is just doing his best in between two incompetent people in the booth. And it really stinks because the truck series does have good racing when they're not running each other over and they have a really bad broadcast partner. And I think the disparity between a good broadcast and the Fox truck series broadcast is only going to widen when you have the newcomers come in with Max and TNT, as well as Amazon Prime, because you know they're going to put a lot of effort into their cut broadcast to make it seem professional and great and new and fresh. And then you're gonna have the same stale 18 year old bread that is the Fox truck series broadcast. So that's a real big bummer.
But at the end of the day, that's the new Meteorites deal. Let me know in the comments, do you like it? Do you hate it? I know some people are not going to like the fact that practice and qualifying are split up over two different streaming platforms. Although one of them is going to be on cable, at least on True TV. Uh, so yeah, let me know there. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.